Welcome to Astrology Today, coming to you not quite live from the beautiful Sunshine Coast and the Cafet region, which is situated on the traditional lands of the Klohomin Nation. I will be your host, Maureen Reed, and Jill Kirby is joining me from Victoria and Jenna from Vancouver, and we are doing another family show for study to see how astrology can chart the way that uh, more than just you know brown eyes continuing or <laughs> red hair continuing or what storylines continue and what challenges yeah. and how do they morph from one generation to another generation or not right mm -hmm. sometimes there is a clear continuation right it's just that pattern that pattern that pattern um, and I think in, in Jenna's case, it would be, you know, this is the family that she's willingly, you know, shot us a bunch of info about. They will probably never listen to this, so we're probably no. safe. <laughs> they might. They might. Oh, okay. they... <laughs> anyway, it's good because we're not looking at it from the point of view. We're just looking at it from the point of view of themes that keep passing down. Yeah. And um, yeah, it may cast some insights, you never know. Um, but before we even dive into that, we have to make note of the fact that we are taping this on the station of Happy Pluto. And I was struck as, um, so my morning ritual is always with the hubby um, and the news feeds, not news channels with talking heads, but news feeds, right? And what struck me was how prominent that large groups of people being pissed off at the, you know, people on the top were uh -huh. prominent today. I mean, it's not like, yeah, exactly. It's not like, you know, the strikes and all of those kinds of things aren't an ongoing phenomena, but it just kind of struck me that today's news kind of had some huge highlights. So yes. we're talking about France, Italy, um, Netherlands, Norway, UK, Canada, the US. Um, you know, there are also just, you know, the ongoing battles in Israel and France over, you know, whose um, way of looking at the world is going to win out. Yeah. And South America's got lots of stuff going on as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, there's, yeah, there's yeah. just, there's unrest the yeah. natives are getting restless. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what we would hope with Pluto in Aquarius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, the social thing. And um, and it's like you can feel it going back into that Capricorn thing again. It's like, no! <laughs> yeah, the same old, yeah. and now everyone's like yeah. uprising, uprising yeah. against it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when I was thinking about that strike thing, what popped into my head was a massive strike with a kind of a really unusual outcome and this was jenna you won't remember this but anyway, <laughs> jill and i will remember in 1981 in the u.s ronald reagan fired i don't know thirteen thousand. um oh, what do you call them the people that make sure planes land um air traffic air control air traffic <laughs> controllers and the only thing that fits is the nodes were at just one degree Aquarius. And I thought, uh, ah, the Aquarius uh, Leo axis, right? And, you know, yeah. Anyway, it just, because when I first looked at it, I couldn't really see any connection. And I thought, no, there's got to be a connection. And then yeah. I noticed the nodes. Yeah. The nodes are always important to look at, for they sure. They are. They are. And of course, we still have Mercury retrograde. I personally ran into it again this week when a function that I thought I was attending got canceled unbeknownst to me. Yes. <laughs> until I made a phone call. Okay, fine. Well, we're also just days away from the uh, the eclipse. Yes, exactly. So that's... You're in, in the midst of this intense, yes. very intense energy. Yes. So if exactly. you're feeling it, there's a reason. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's have a look at some family dynamics. Oh, and cool. the format that I'm going to follow is, <clears throat> so who we have, we have a grandmother, we have her son, the son marries someone, 
and they produce two children. So that, that's the line we're going to follow. But we're going to start with the piece that we, you know. So it, this isn't the whole picture, but it no. will, it does show how some pieces still do carry on. There would be, you know, um, the dad's dad, if we had that, there would be pieces in there. And, you know, so by the time you get to yeah. Jenna and her brother, the influences have multiplied. And so we'll only see one of those lines. Just the, yeah. 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 Okay. So here we go. Let me share screen. And we're going to start with uh, grandma and her son. And we also I don't have times for everybody. No, we do have. Which is always a bit of a frustration for us. Yeah. As well. That is true. That is very true. And so um, I did a by will because that sort of eliminates the fact that granny doesn't have a time. Yeah. Um, but it does set it against an approximate time for dad. Mm -hmm. And Jenna, do you can you fill us in with a little bit of the background of why his dad is not part of this picture? Yeah, he I mean, he, he was an alcoholic. Um, my mom, my dad never spoke about his dad or him leaving i actually found out through a psychic who oh. said i see your dad leaving as a little boy at four or five years old leaving in the middle of the night with his mom and getting in the car and driving to a different province oh wow. and i was like oh okay. my gosh i've never heard this yeah. you know very dramatic story i tell my dad in the car the next day you almost had a car accident oh, oh my god, god. There yeah, he was, he was shocked. And he's, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Middle of the night. Wow. My mom said, I've had enough of this. Yeah. I'm going from Moose Jaw to Saskatoon. They left him. And yeah. then my dad didn't see him until he was 17 when he drove out to Vancouver, where he had moved to. Right. And he had, you know, his dad had a whole new family that are my uncles, his, you uh -huh. know, yeah, it's just yeah. Yeah. family. There's yeah. always stories. <laughs> so, yeah. of course, what really and the way I've set up the charts for people that will go to YouTube and watch this, or go to my website and see the charts, um, we've got uh, you know Granny who has this major conjunction. So she's got Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Moon all in Cancer. She does have some outliers which give this kind of concentration the element of perspective, which is very useful when you have, when you concentrate like this. She's got yeah. Saturn in Scorpio, which trines that. That can work really well. And she has Jupiter opposite in Capricorn. It's also possible that the moon could be in Leo. Yes, it could, because it's... Depending on what time yeah. date she's born. So, exactly. So if she was so born before noon... It would stay in Cancer, but yes, as Jill says, if she later in the day, later in the day, it would definitely be Leo. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Just, so, <clears throat> and that might be a question that Jenna could ask in terms of because with a Leo Moon, there would be a better synchronicity between mom and son uh, because of the Moon in Gemini and the Moon in Leo would actually <laughs> have some points of contact. Otherwise, um, you know, it's my first impression when I saw this was this likely was a mom who basically married her son, right? Yeah. Once, he had, once they had left, right? Which is not mm -hmm. an uncommon thing because yeah. there wasn't the supports for single moms that, <clears throat> that there are now. And so, you know, the focused relationship on one child, and I'm assuming, did she have any more children? No. Yeah. So that becomes kind of problematic, <laughs> you know, because a kid is not really an adult yet. Anyway. Especially with all that cancer energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, and she cool. was looking for someone outside of herself to do that Saturn responsibility and that Jupiter, somebody needs to be in charge. And given when she was born, that oh, gosh. Was, that was the yeah. script, right? Yeah. You know, and but she was wise I, enough and willing enough 
um, to go, no, I have to leave this guy because he's, yeah. Yeah. And she was so young. She was, yeah, I yeah. didn't realize how young she was. Yeah. 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 So she was a, but that having that much cancer, this is a cardinal sign. So these folks are strong, right? Mm -hmm. And they're strong in terms of protecting themselves and acting, right? You know, they yeah. will act. Um, you know, follow through. Fortunately, she does have Saturn. So that does give, you know, some follow through. It's a fixed sign. Um, the Jupiter, she would still be looking for outside validation, though. Right. She had a lot of boyfriends. That's oh, what my dad said. There was always a boyfriend. Yeah. And yeah, my dad had was working since he was like 12, you know, yeah. on, on a farm. Yeah. He, it, my dad is a tough prairie boy yeah 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 okay so we can see that obviously you know from mother to son there is that concentration gets you know linked over um they would have been very supportive of each other i see jupiter always as like a cheerleader between two charts mm. um and so they definitely have that um you know he too is a cancer um he only has his jupiter there but um, he followed up with that same kind of mush together thing of, so he has Saturn, Venus, Moon, and Mercury in Gemini. Then he has Jupiter, Sun in Cancer, and then he has Mars in Leo. He has no outliers, which, mm. um, so mom had some perspective, dad, not so much, unless he chooses now, having that much Gemini, being curious, that would have helped. But this mm. is a very focused chart. And it sort of replicates his mom, right? In terms mm -hmm. of the, the ability to, you know, have, I'm going there. <laughs> now, the mutability means that there has to be a fairly wide field or he gets bored, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what did he, did, did he leave the farming thing? Of Moose uh, and... Yeah, and he became a teacher. Oh, perfect. Um, perfect. Yeah. yeah, he was a great teacher. Yeah. Uh, and then the minute he could leave, he applied for work in Vancouver. Okay. Um, and then he stopped teaching, I think, when I was younger. And he bounced around and he did lots of different things because I think he got bored and he didn't like... Yeah working mm -hmm. under someone i think that yeah, that's okay. also an issue authority mm -hmm. um and so you did real estate you did stock market stuff oh, wow. yeah def definitely a restless person yeah. yeah yeah and without you know um so jill has a piece that she's going to want to add here about the mars the mars has the capacity of follow through and sticking to it but jill well, in, well, can I share a screen? Yeah, yes, you can. Yeah, because yours will be a different picture. Yeah. Yeah, where did it get out of the way? <laughs> There's things on the bottom that pop up. I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's frustrating. I agree. Okay, so I'm going to put them up here and we'll look at the difference. Because she is that Jill will be adding in the outer planets. Uh, yeah. From the modern so perspective. what what I noticed right away? Well, there's a strong connection here, notably with his Pluto, uh -huh. yeah, from North Node, and but this Chiron this Chiron conjunction with with Mars, to me it felt like sort of being emasculated or a wounding to the masculine aspect of him. Mm. Yeah. One thing he's a Cancerian, and for men it's hard, you know, to have that water sign thing, right? Because that's a feminine sign, and um, so it, it just felt, yeah. So the story kind of explains some of that, and also her Neptune is not helping that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right? and and that's probably not so fond of men in terms of you know having dealt with his dad. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe, yeah, and just like carrying on that resentment yeah. to him and expecting, yeah, expecting him to maybe take care of her. I mean, yeah, he would always, definitely be he always had a job. Yeah, he, I'm sure he was contributing. I mean, yeah, they, trying to they make did, up for the dad, 
Yeah. Yeah. They didn't make money. Like they lived in low income housing. When I drove across Canada, my dad gave me the address and I went to the low income housing and I sent him a picture. He's like, Oh, they cleaned up the place. Looks a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> but the other, the other thing I noticed is this moon Mercury is squaring Neptune. So again, that in his chart. So again, for communication, that makes it difficult. Right? Yeah. He'd be yeah. better, he'd be better at nonverbal communication with people, like just telepathically. Yeah. The words probably confuse things. Oh, for sure. He I he is constantly struggling to find the words to yeah. describe things. <laughs> it's yeah. funny sometimes. Sometimes yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> yes, yes. And and her Venus is conjunct Pluto, her Pluto. Okay. And that that's kind of hovering around his sun. So yes. Oh, it, a bit of control it, going on there. Yeah, I, I think I mean, from what I heard, it was a bit of a tumultuous relationship. Um yeah, and his his Pluto squares her Saturn. So a bit of Jeez. who's going to control things here. So the other planets do add uh, quite a, an element here. And and also her, it's interesting, you know, the generational thing, because you yeah. got her, her Uranus opposite his Neptune, and that squares that both of those. Right, planets. that squares both of those planets. Yeah, chaotic, confusing. Yeah. So it just would have exacerbated his yeah, yeah trying to yeah. find the words. It wasn't supportive. Well, because he, you know, that being that young when they had to leave, um, that's hard to, you don't have the words at that stage to really comprehend what's going on and clear in your own mind. So yeah. I, you know, that would count, compound that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that, yeah, that's, uh, and of course, he's got this Uranus-Saturn conjunction here, which, again, adds just another element to that. <laughs> yeah, Uran he's definitely Uranian. Yeah, well. I feel like <laughs> yeah. describe him as that. Yeah, because, you know, the Saturn, the Saturn is one thing, but Uranus conjunct Saturn is a really difficult combo. But right, I'm. Saturn wants the box and Uranus wants out of the box. Yeah, I I mean, it, it seems like I've seen that in a couple of different people. And I think like, oh, that person just needs to run their own business or they're just the energies. Is, that could is, be where you're getting your, the idea of ADHD, you know, too much, yeah. too much juice in the system. And it's Gemini, which can be too much in and of itself. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that can happen with Moon Mercury is the childlike influence, like the early emotional um, storyline, okay, can, when they get really upset, take over. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was married yeah. to a Moon Mercury conjunction. Yeah. And if insecurity happened, it happened and it would appear almost childlike. Oh, yeah. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. 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 And yeah. yeah, it makes it hard to have clear thinking when you've got the moon conjunct Mercury because your yeah. your emotions will be there, right? Yeah. Will and hit, and being a cancer. Yeah. 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 The well, other thing that both Jill and I noted is when you put when you have this kind of concentration, the signs next to each other really don't communicate they're they're never the same element they're never the same you know quadruplicity none of those things yeah and they are merged so, yeah so, re so really grandma's difficult. better off if her moon is in cancer yes than she is if it's moved into leo in yeah. terms of feeling more integrated in herself yeah. whereas dad he's you know they've got he's got them side by side and yeah there's a disconnect no perspective there. yeah yeah that doesn't yeah. help Okay, yeah. let's look at, um, we're going to go next level up. We're going to look at who does he marry? Does he marry his mom? And one of the classic things that, um, you know, I can remember saying, you know, in my typical shtick fashion is that um, people will marry, 
you know, either their mom or their dad to begin with, uh, well, just yeah. because it's familiar. Okay. And you might, you might marry your mom and then marry your dad, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, there's something, you know, the root, the root word for familiar is family. So yeah, we so, like, we like what feels familiar. Exactly. So we tend to gravitate exactly. towards so did he marry his mom? Well, when I put these two charts together, I was like, oh my goodness. So the fact that mom was looking for a Capricorn to comp to do the natural compliment. To the oh my answer, gosh. Yeah, uh, your mom almost represents uh, what Wilhelmina wanted. Oh yeah. my gosh. Exactly. And look at the Saturn. The, you know, this the two Saturns are the oh same. Oh my gosh. Except this Mars Saturn, your mom, has a way stronger access to that. Like yeah. that, yeah. that is a very strong Mars Saturn because it's in sign, right? Oh yeah. It's Get out of Debbie's way. Yeah. Get yeah. out of Debbie's way. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and yeah, that that can be like um you know, a bomb that's got a very, a lid on it. Tick, 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 yeah. And a really big boom. And when it yeah. blows, look out, because it's rage, not anger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. what was the anomaly in this picture um, yeah. is, is the moon, right? So it's calling a contest to this dynamic. And so, yeah. you know, at first blush, you know, he would be fulfilling his, his own mother's dream. Oh and, my gosh. But then there's this like, huh? And of course she ties into him with that classic um, cheerleader function, yeah. you know, her Jupiter on top of all of his Gemini. So he might Sorry, Debbie, have... Debbie's. Yes. Yeah, so Debbie's on Debbie, top of my dad's. Yes. Right. So he yeah. wouldn't necessarily have seen the Mars and Aries at first because he this would have felt familiar because mom had it, right? Yeah. He would have understood what mom was looking for, but this would have been, yeah, <laughs> he may not have well, seen this part coming. I'm not sure. And in some ways, <laughs> in some ways it's like he's looking for the opposite of this. Yeah. Right? And but. Mm -hmm. 180 degrees is, is still it's like the same same in a way yeah yeah it is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well they are opposite like mom's january 11th and dad's yeah. july 11th they're exactly six yeah. months apart they are so that part yeah. so let's move on to that one which would be i think it's this one that is so yes. wild yeah. yeah so here we have you know this is there's some that's pretty, your brother Oh no, that's the wrong one. Okay, let me get, let me just see which one do I want to. Oh, let me get the right number. I have them here. So mom and dad, eight and seven. Eight and seven. Oh, where did it go? I don't have it. Oh, seven, eight. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this is classic. Sun opposite sun or moon. Actually, more classic is one of these will be a moon and the other one is the sun. Mm -hmm. That's more classic in terms yeah. of long long term relationships. Um, and so, just the fact that it's dueling suns could could have been what spelled that. Yeah, this isn't going to work. The other thing is there's a huge disconnect between uh, a Capricorn Mercury and a Mercury in Gemini. This is, yeah. even though there, she yeah. can cheerlead all this Gemini stuff, communication would have been like, huh? Oh my God, both both of their communication styles well, have yeah. issues in themselves, but yes, together, yeah. Yeah. oil yeah. and water. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the same with what they value, which is another thing that will, you want to see some really nice contacts between Venuses, um, just not there. Now the spice, the juice that, brought them together that's there mars square mars right? yeah. that'll do it that'll do it but they didn't value the same things no 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 you know um but you can sort of see an of a piece following from the grandmother right these concentrations um you know your mom was a little more diverse okay so that by the time we get to the kids the diversity has happened 
right? Well, and her moon, her moon is squaring all of that. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Like it's the tension. Is that... um, her strong Sun Mercury Venus is all squared by her moon? It's like yep. emotionally. Yeah, her that, background. That... So the other thing that you can say about your Sun Moon in your own personal chart is that was the kind of relationship at the moment that you were born. Mm -hmm. So yeah. mom and dad, if there's a square, weren't getting along that day. Yeah. Um, I've got a sex style between my sun and moon that day when I was born, they were actually getting along, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> and often it's, often it's just your perception of how well, they yeah. Were. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Not necessarily what was going on, but you could yeah. pick up on some energy. Yeah, the, and, and again, it's mm. the day. It's just it's yeah, day, right. It's the transit day. for the day. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And oh course, my gosh. Of course, when you add in the uh, the outer planets. Yeah. So here we'll switch. We'll switch out and let Jill put hers up. Who are we looking at? <laughs> We're looking at mom and dad together. Oh, okay. De Debbie and Jim. Debbie and Jim. Yeah, I think he's he's the one with the birth time, so we'll put yeah. her around. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was interesting if if her if she's born around noon, they actually have the same ascendant, which would give them some commonality. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. Like an, a, a how they view the world kind of thing. But is your mom as beautiful as you? <laughs> I'm serious. You're a very uh, good-looking she... woman, honey. Thank <laughs> you. Like yeah, I like I my mom. She, she's the eldest, and she was yeah always had the identity of being this like beautiful woman. And she was so she got you know, good born bones. in the fifties. Good and bone so, structure. Good bone structure. Yeah, she's beautiful, but I suspect that she, her ascendant is Leo. Okay, that's okay. my theory. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. But I yeah cannot guarantee. Yeah. But yeah, we look very similar in pictures I've seen when she's younger. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, and the red hair can come from the Aries piece too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it would get it, yeah, it would get magnified if it's Leo rising as well. So yeah, this this is um challenging to the relationship here. Yes. Having Uranus conjunct the sun, especially when it's opposing the other sun, Mercury, Venus. Yeah. Like, yeah. She, yeah, disrupting she, disrupting yeah yeah because again it's it's kind of like his saturn uranus conjunction mm -hmm. um that she's got all this capricorn stuff and then this uranus piece that's saying yeah but i want some freedom here <laughs> yeah and, you know she's like what what do you why capricorn <laughs> wants, wants structure and stability and all that you know everything. oh she is a true yeah. true Capricorn but Uranus yeah. is there saying yeah there's this pull on the other side that says let's get out of the box for a while <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so that's kind of interesting and then um yeah this her Pluto is very not that far away from his Mars there mm -hmm. so she's gonna be the yeah. one and that's that generational thing you know it's yeah 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 yeah, Neptune yeah. Is and, but I think signs. yeah but I think also yeah yeah also he he probably would see you know children and stuff as competition for her affection and stuff mm. and I think that makes sense with the issues he had with his own mom yeah, yeah and, exactly. you know I yeah. think that's kind of a classic yeah mom issue yeah you passed down yeah 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 and uh and so and having the the two moons sex style that that's a difficult piece because if they descend into childlike scripts yep not pretty the moon <laughs> moon sextiling is bad yeah. oh yeah well it is in relationship because unless you've got people who are self-aware enough to recognize when um, patterns are being pushed, right? You know, yeah. it just exacerbates it, right? Because now you got two kids going at it. I mean, yeah, they can have fun together too, 
but you know with the fact that communication didn't work well here uh you know the yeah. mars being square um, and with both of them having having the challenging mars in their own yeah um yeah it's kind of like yeah me first me first kind of thing and mm -hmm. aries moon says me first <laughs> oh yeah and you know gemini's might not challenge it that much but you know he's used to having mom all to himself too so yeah. there's that their anger both of their anger expressed oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in very very different ways yeah but yeah yeah yes. yeah. yeah yeah and uh, yeah and and it's just like mars can be triggered like in the in your dad's case with the mars chiron yeah it's where the wound is and so yeah when he's triggered he's yeah there's yeah he's off no reasoning and and with mom she might control it a bit but once it's really triggered that yeah, Aries the moon and Aries, then the drought Aries moon is just gonna go ballistic. So yeah, you know, it's just yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. You can see why this might not have worked off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for that Mar Mars Chiron, um, my dad tells stories about how in the prairies, you know, growing up in the fifties and sixties, mm. it's just I mean, it was really rough and people, oh, yeah. he, he recalls that people dealt with issues just by fighting, just yeah, literal, yeah, just it's literally just fighting. And so he, and he was, he was bullied in school um, and was seen kind of as like, great, great, uh, maybe a mama's boy, but also like crazy. He uses the term, people saw me as crazy. <laughs> so that Saturn Uranus, like weirdo. Yeah. And so he was just in fights all the time. And then as he got older, he got, you know, really scrappy. Mm -hmm. And I know that when he, he still talks about it and he's like a pretty Zen guy, but when he talks about those stories, yeah. he yeah. gets really riled up, and really triggered. Specifically mm -hmm. he talks about like violence or fighting or anything like that. And it's well, just the, the cancer son is not going to want to do that. They no, want, I can see that contrast to, in him. They just want to yeah. get into their shell and be protected, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, yeah, if somebody's fighting, that's going to make them very uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and, and then Taurus, the is, Uranus is going to, yeah, it's going to react to that. And Taurus is a fairly, you know, it, it wants sort of peace and stability, right? It doesn't want fighting. <laughs> yeah. So plus, as I said, I I think with that Car Chiron Mars, mm. you know, there's sort of a wound to his sense of masculinity, you know, just because he was a mama's boy, not by his own choosing. No. And how much he looked like his own father would have played into. Oh, my what gosh. Jill is talking about. Right. So oh my even gosh. though it's... mom saves child, mom looks at child and goes, oh, you were the asshole I left. Exactly. Yeah, it's this little love hate thing. It's it's yeah. classic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's remarkable. My my grandfather, who I never met, he had another family. And so those are my uncles who I knew growing up. And I just thought they were all full siblings because they look exactly the same. Yeah. They look exactly the same. <laughs> but my dad is the only one who's a half sibling. So yeah, yeah it's just what is in the genes. Where, I would love to see that astrology, but yeah, that's where that you know strong gene or or the astrology thing carrying through is like yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's look at some kids that came out of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so we have a brother, and we have a timed chart. So. See now who we're we gonna start with. So we'll look My at brother that. was the only child till you came along. Yeah, five, yes. Seven, five, seven. Here we go. In terms of like we oh, actually like, I was gonna start with <laughs> he was the star for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so, totally. Oh, what am I doing here? Wrong one. Yeah. Oh, what did I do? That was dumb. Okay, we'll just put it up again. No, nope, that is not what I wanted. Oh, the little that thing should you should be able to get rid of that, but you can't. Okay, so why do I go? 
Joe and Jim. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, what did we carry over? All righty. Now, what have we got here? Okay. So, a real, you know, perfect disconnect to begin with. <laughs> you know, Pisces. It's like, yes, Pisces and Cancer have a water element. Yeah, uh, but the mutability and the cardinality, especially, you know, with dad having Jupiter um, cancer, it, you know, it's just, huh? And the other and thing is this Mercury, Mercury, because it's squaring yeah. is that why you're saying that? No, Which... it's 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 um, OK. When you put Jupiter and the sun together, it gets yeah. very almost leonic. In nature. Yes, like it's it's masculine, it's big, yes. even though it's hidden, right? Like the true underbelly is not showing because it's cancer and it has to protect itself. But it's going to stand big and loud. Sun Mercury in Pisces is not big and loud, no, right? You know, like yeah. he does yeah. have um, you know Capricorn rising, but it's not backed up with anything. No, and 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 really, Sun and. Pisces, you've got the ego planet, the planet that represents, you know, who I am in a sign that goes, I am one with everything. <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah. how do I define myself? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's not an easy fit for no. sun in no. to be yeah. in Pisces just because of this the piece, the physicality fits. Right? Yeah. It's quite well, actually. This is an exalted moon. Um, and and, and, yeah. yeah, and conjunct Mars. So this piece really works. Um, but with the Gemini, if the mind here, like, uh, you know, if, but it, men don't normally, if this was between a mom and a daughter, it would have been easier. Mm -hmm. Because then that communication level, that's nonverbal, it's, it's would have not, been accepted uh, yeah yeah it's not unacceptable but between uh mercury in its own sign and a mercury in pisces there's just like this huh <laughs> like well, what, and what you are got, you saying and why are you saying that and what the hell and, and you're, you're squaring this yeah. saturn too yeah so. exactly yeah. exactly and, and um, again got a nodal connection too yes yeah um, uh, so we do have some connection between the Venus to the, all this Gemini stuff, but again, it's, it's a different flavor. So this is a real step away from what your dad, you know, had in his scenario, right? It's a real step away. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you've got, and you've got J um, Joel's Saturn opposite yes. his moon. Yeah. It's like, okay. oh, come on, dad, you know, like, what kind of dad are you anyway? And yeah, yeah. And, and dad didn't learn how to be a dad because he didn't have he a dad. Did, he didn't have one. Exactly. And that for a child, a ch children, you know, like we're, we're, we come into the world with um, biological expectations. And that <laughs> is we will be seen, we will be loved, we will be protected, and we will be safe. Um, and then, of course, we discover what we actually came in with, which is usually not quite up to par. <laughs> and with the Saturn and Sag, that was a pretty high bar <laughs> that Joel would have set. And oh, I see. Because yeah, it's in Sag. Sag has this more huge, is the masculine. Yeah, yeah. Figure okay, and it's big and loud. Well, it's not so much big and loud, but it has a. Um, uh, I'm my brain just went blank. It's sort of it sets up this is the way it should be. It's mm -hmm. not a Leo storyline. It's the way it should be, given the time that this child came into the world. So the the age difference here would have made a difference as well. Yeah. Right? You know, like your dad would have thought, okay, my son should be this, but by the time he had Joel. Joel's growing up in a world where the sun looks something different and that's yeah. supposed to look like something different. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And having had older parents myself, you know, it's, yeah. 
you're, you're very you're already different from the other kids because your parents are in a whole different generation yeah exactly yeah yeah there is and, there is a bit of a disconnect oh totally <laughs> i know that one too <laughs> yeah and it's frustrating for the child right because they look around at their own peers who have more appropriately aged parents and they're like well i don't get that no, no. Yeah. It, it took and you me notice really, it. You notice it. It took me a good. really long time to realize that that's the, like that's the norm because what you grow up with you think is normal, right? Exactly. And I can remember, like, as an adult living in Gibson's, I got on the bus one day and there's these two women got on, obviously a mother daughter, like older ladies. Oh, and, yeah. I, and I looked at them and I thought, you know, they're probably about twenty years apart, and that's pretty much normal, right? Yep. And I thought. Oh, that's like me and my daughter, and that's more normal than what I grew up with. It's like, whoa, <laughs> this is, was really interesting. A little flash. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Joel would have noticed that in terms of his expectation of dad, and yeah, yeah. And when we put in again, if when we put in the outer planets, yeah, um, you know, because that's the generation, a uh, bigger generational thing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it. Uh, you can see other stuff there. So we've got, oops. Who are we putting on the inside, Joel or Jim? Yeah. Joel, because, oh. yeah, we have, we definitely have a, a yeah. accurate birth time for him. So, yeah. There. And, and well, the other thing with him, he's got Neptune right on his ascendant. Mm -hmm. So that adds to that Piscean kind of. Yes. Yeah, we're not, we're not. He could probably do invisible very well. Mm. What, what does he do anyway? We know nothing about this guy. Okay. <laughs> um, he works in film as well. He works in health and safety department, but Joel is, oh, has always been like a walking history textbook. Okay. Um, huge history, political science buff very involved in I politics he's a radicalist i that's would call that. him politically oh, yeah. radical yeah. um he has high ideals he yeah. Yeah. if he sees a politician he, he, if he sees a politician he doesn't like out in the city he will say something and he will embarrass the people he's with look at this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So the men have an opposite is mars yeah man there that is again yeah. And you and Mars, like, Pluto. Like Dad, we've got a Saturn Uranus conjunction. Yeah, so he did, but his is more proactive with well, the, and, uh, and it opposes that that Sun or that Moon Mercury that Dad had. Damn the Saturn Uranus! Oh my gosh! And up. it and it would be way more active than your Dad's because again, your Dad's got such a compressed thing. Right. Yeah. And, all and, together and, clustered. Yeah, yeah. Not as so able to, you know, stay focused in one particular direction. Oh, okay. So because Joel has more of a balanced chart, he can utilize yeah. his Saturn Uranus. Yeah, but you've also you've got his Joel's Venus opposite Dad's Pluto. And, and gener Mars. generationally, you've got oh, this Pluto Pluto square. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's they are of that such a different generation generations yeah right mm -hmm. that's sort of how that says that yeah and then you've got, um dad's jupiter opposite joel's neptune exactly <laughs> just you know because he's not piscean enough you gotta throw neptune in there to add more to that mm -hmm. so yeah. that jupiter opposite neptune is that like well i mean their ideals are just different like the way that they are seeing the world is very different. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and also just, you know, this can also magnify any confusion that's there. Yeah. The other so thing, too, is the Jupiter, um, your, you know, his dad, that Jupiter does not support that Uranus Saturn, whereas Joel's Jupiter does, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're both in fire signs. Um, you know, they're able to he's able to push that agenda uh, more so. Whereas yours might, your dad might've just bled off into the moon Mercury, right? Giving you that ADHD feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. And the other piece here is this that Joel's Chiron is on Dad's Venus. So again, I think that's, you know, in a sense, sure. he, he wants the partner all to himself and now he's got competition from the kid. And, you know, it's like Chiron's a wound, right? So he hard times. So if, life. yeah, so if Joel could speak to mom better than he could speak to mom, yeah 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 and i also wonder about that venus chiron about um like i want to say like toxic masculinity or like or m being soft and like i feel like both of these men in my life like they're they're both like sensitive soft men and they don't know how to integrate it yeah well yeah and that might be triggering that for both of them Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've got the Pisces as well as, you know, the Taurus moon, which is exalted, yes, but it's still a, you know, a feminine sign, right? Yes, exactly. The, you know, he's trying to work that Mars in the feminine <laughs> sign. Like, yeah. yeah. Difficult, yeah. yeah. But again, you know, how is that, you know, a reflection of what came down through dad? You've got the mm -hmm. Chiron thing up here. Yeah, I'm squaring that. Yeah, yeah so... Which, which actually, that Chiron in conjunction with Joel's sons. <laughs> oh, man. Pass it on down. Right? That Chiron is in conjunction with son. Okay. Yeah, like what they bond over is is like the news, okay. yeah. politics, yeah. Yeah. and just like factual factual things but they do they yeah. really they they do get along I'm like I'm seeing a lot of friction here but they they've relied on each other quite a bit oh that's good yeah. good. That's good yeah in different yeah. ways yeah well there would be the commonality of a feminine style man yeah 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 so, yeah, yeah. And this this nodal connection as well which can be very strong mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I am drawn to more feminine, soft boys. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, ah, you're Aries. This is like, your yeah, mom. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. too funny. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. Okay. So, one last one. We'll look at uh, him and your mom. Like, did they? This is going to be yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, let me that one okay so that's Jean and Debbie yeah so is your brother married no no but he's with someone who's okay. wonderful right on, right on. yeah yeah so you know there would have been that hope um from mom that you know here's I've got a son I shape him the way I want it, you know the boys to be and all that kind of good stuff so there's that connection um and she does have an influence on how he wants to you know stand in the world definitely um are you about to check up oh you gonna... sorry so, yeah duh, here i am i put it up and then i forgot to share you do yeah. that would be good <laughs> that would be good wouldn't it god I don't know. I thought you were doing a preamble before you did. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. That's there, okay. it there it is. There it is. I'm sorry. That's yeah. Okay. So, you know, here's mom right on his ascendant. Yep. Um, yeah. She probably figures she has more sway than she actually does. But then, you know, her ascendant, if, if, if she was born then, yeah, would be on his, but we don't know that. We okay. Don't. So. <laughs> sorry. What did I have to say about this? um okay so the pisces he can excite hers right you know there can be this excitement going that way but i don't know if it would go this way just mm. because of the fact that you know she is wanting a capricorn male yeah in her yeah. life yeah so that it Although for him way. for hope for him that that Capricorn energy might provide the container for that sloshy, yeah. sloshy Pisces. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Although he's got the Taurus energy himself to do that. Yeah. So here, here we run into, yeah. it's like, uh oh, th this is not good. No. <laughs> We've got Mars, Saturn, which is incredibly strong, duking yep. it out with a Mars moon, which is no weak okay. piece at all. Um, and yeah, that I'm sure you can tell us stories about, you know, who was more stubborn. Um, oh my God. Between the two of them. <laughs> So who would win typically? Debbie. Like of look course. at her Mars. Like of course. But then would. but then Joel would make the biggest splash. Right? Ah. Like well said. <laughs> Nobody can uh, Yeah. Yeah. And so I was the mediator. Like Oh, ouch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> the nurturing that he was looking for wasn't happening um no. yeah uh communication wise again uh, you know this is a sex style but i can speak as you yes. know having a capricorn moon and people with mercury and pisces just drive me around the bend and they're lovely people love them to bits different language yeah <laughs> different language yes it's a sex yeah, style, I, but this, this is sex styling and and trining this rather than swearing but yeah yeah, it's, yeah. Not... it's yeah um you know and obviously the jupiter moon i mean he loves his mom that's just a given well and again the nodal connection is yeah always oh yeah interesting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's always 13 else. degrees aries yeah. and what's interesting okay. too is so their their sense of authority and structure and being responsible they're very different we've got saturn in scorpio we've got saturn in sag um and there's this ah that you know that's an uneasy connection because yeah. you know scorpio is going for the cajones and sag meanwhile has shot the arrow into you know this is the way the world should be and yeah there's yeah yeah that that particular is a no-go <laughs> yeah it was like the you know the sag optimistic future-minded yeah. versus yeah you and, know and also, the traditionalist also kind of supports the pisces thing of of um, um going for perfection right um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yes exactly exactly having you know having, like the, having the vision having the vision having the vision of how it should right how it that should be very much so agree. like people like einstein had similar kind of connections between pisces and sag right you know so yeah the the music of the spheres is what comes to mind between sag and pisces now whereas saturn and saturn and scorpio <laughs> not especially interested. it's not confused about what it wants it just wants power yeah <laughs> Yeah. exactly power and control that's all i want yeah yep power and control what does it look like i don't know i want it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and nothing else will do well and <laughs> that that's yeah that's probably protective stuff for her yeah 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 uh, so oh yeah um, they do i do find that they mirror each other yeah, and again, the outer planets play in as well. Yeah, so, so let's have a look at that. Um, the, the last thing I just wanted to say is where they do connect, obviously, is between the Taurus and the Capricorn. Yeah. This, <laughs> this can work, this can work, but let's pull in the uh, the other pieces. Although not, not having the uh, close aspects there, that which would yeah. have been more helpful. Yes, it would have been. At least there's the uh, energetic yeah. similarity. Where were we at, Joel? We're Joel and Debbie. Debbie, right. Aww. Here we go. Okay, so yeah. Um, what was I? <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, you got, you got Jupiter on Chiron. Chiron. Yep. Yeah. So Jupiter likes to expand what it touches. So if he's got oh, a wound. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. If he's so, got a wound. Yeah, yeah, mama's gonna poke it. Yeah, yeah. And it opposes his Saturn. So he's got his Saturn over here in Jupiter's sign trying to do its thing. And Jupiter's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Got an opposite view on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. 
they they both trigger each other quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. And her Pluto is actually trining his oh, Uranus. Yeah. Oh wow. That's interesting. Saturn yeah. Uranus. Yeah. But the big one is the Pluto to Saturn Mars. That that would not yeah. be that would not be helpful. No. 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 That's 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 a tricky one, that's for sure. That is. Yeah. There's a lot of power dynamics yes. everything yes. that every pattern that we've looked at yeah it's Power Mars, control. But Pluto. Again, when you come out of a chaotic kind of background mm-hmm. you want to be you want to create control. it again you want to control things so you can be safe right yeah yeah there's that you know we all want to feel safe so there's a a push to that yeah and trust would be the coinage of the power you know can mm-hmm. i trust you right yeah and of course joel's looking for this ideal this vision whatever and meanwhile you know mom's down in the sewer digging you know and going do you really have some power or don't you have power right and he's going, yeah oh i think i have power i got you know yeah and, and i mean pisces is not going to likely feel terribly powerful no no that's yeah an unfortunate thing and of course with her Capricorn on his ascendant, she's looking for the man that she wants. Yeah, well, my grandpa is a Capricorn. He's born a week before my mom. Uh, And they were very close. mm -hmm. His death last year really rocked her. And so that, yeah, she's looking to Joel to be her dad. And that's just not, and they never, they were never the same people ever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, and a week before would put his son right on her Venus, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they were, they were really close. Yeah. They really, they understood each other a lot. And my mom is the eldest of four, and the rest of them had, you know, tumultuous relationships at times. Mm-hmm. With and, the and, dad, and they were solid together always. And this Neptune on the ascendant, especially with you know all the Pisces energy wants to be what other people need them to be Hmm. right there is that chameleon like thing that goes with the pisces neptune story that you know they can be whatever you need them to be they're chameleons you know don't like this color i'll just shift to another one (laughs) you know so yeah he was probably trying really hard to yeah fulfill those to be that to be that person yeah not in him to do because it's not him which you know yeah. is yeah. a good thing but yeah <laughs> families are complicated and oh, yeah. guess what ladies oh, we're almost out of time <laughs> we have used up the time and <laughs> um i am going to make an announcement for the radio viewers this will be our last show that comes out on the radio station but we will be continuing you can find us on youtube and uh, you will find us under cardinal astrology on youtube and and, spotify and on spotify and all those other good platforms so we will be continuing on just not on the radio station anyway in the meantime you have been listening to cjmp 90.1 fm Quebec region's community radio station have a good life everyone bye have a good week look us up at cardinal astrology on spotify